This is Twit. Well, I got a, just a couple of things I want to run by. Again, I, I've been not only going uh, uh, around and around with so many guys in email and so on, but the ham fest, there's just so many people and the questions are so wonderful. People are getting really excited about this because they never dreamed they could build something. And then when they build it, it works. That is the best part. And uh, the way that Gene has laid out the diagrams, you don't need the schematic. You can go right straight through and uh, you don't need much at all to, to make things work. So uh, if you haven't started yet, uh, you want to do it. You really do. It's, it's a fascinating part of this hobby. But I want to tell you, as I do, I try to do this every week. And I get once in a while, I'll get some of these doom and gloomers giving me all kinds of trouble about, oh, you're going to electrocute somebody. No, we're not. We're going to teach you how to respect high voltage. You need to do it no matter if you built it, if you own it, operate it, whatever. You just have to respect it. And uh, uh, the main thing is that you understand what's going on uh, inside. But I, I, what I want to do here real quickly, I'm going to do a run through of all of the diagrams, either the late diagrams. So a lot of people missed some of them and they're saying, well, how come you changed it? And you did it. If you watched every show, you will know we improved it. I, I would do something and Richard and I, W0BVT, that kind of my mentor on all this and uh, Gene and chip a lot of guys are putting in their their two cents worth so to speak and so we we make things better but this is the final if you really want to start from scratch or if you haven't done it this way that's the power supply with the bridge rectifier the bridge rectifier will give us a lot more voltage than the tube rectifier and uh, we're getting about four and a half to five watts out of the transmitter that is the mic preamp. Now, you have to understand that this mic preamp will work for a lot of other things. That's why we have an input and an output. I didn't wire, I didn't have hardwire any of these because we're going to do some other things later on with that preamp. And we all, I mean, everybody that has built this and that knows a little bit about uh, circuitry and electronics. We're all freaked out how good this thing sounds. Well, it should because it came from a guitar amplifier preamp I built back in about 74 or 75. Uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive, Joe Walsh, a number of my friends back in those days were using that to drive their amplifiers. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it's going to sound pretty good. Um, and it's got the high boost switch. And of course, it has equalization, but that's the preamp we came up with the last uh, last thing. And then we're not going to be changing this much. This is it. And that's why I'm doing this tonight, because this will be uh, put up on our website here in just a few days. So they'll all be there. This is the final. Uh, it, 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 it really hasn't changed much and it works really good. Uh, we're getting about four and a half to five watts. Now, here's another interesting part of this. This is the layout, and that's all you need. If you put that power supply together using this layout, it, it's right there for you. You can't go wrong. You really can't. <clears throat> and then here is the layout that Gene did for the preamp. And uh, it, it's just so easy. And it's got all of the volume uh, – the uh, Treble controls, bass control, volume, and a switch for high boost. It's all there. So this is um, this is the whole the whole shebang of the mic preamplifier. Somebody asked me one a question at the Hamfest the other day. What is that for? Why do you have a 2.5 millihenry choke in a preamp? Very simple. That choke and that capacitor going to ground, the below one, 
is an RFI filter. So if any RFI gets on this input, guess what? It's going to go to ground. That's what it's there for. It's it's an, an, a, just a, a little filter. You probably won't need it with the uh, five watts, but we didn't know, so we put it in there. Kind of a little thing to teach you how we, we can do some of this stuff. And this is the great final. This final is so cool. This actually came from about a 1953 ARRL handbook, and uh, Richard had built it years ago. And there's a lot of these out there running around that when we built years ago, and we're still building. But there it is, so simple. And uh, again, there's another one of the chokes, but that's not there for RFI. <laughs> it kind of, I guess it kind of is. It keeps the RF from going back into the modulator. We want it to go that, that way, not that way. <laughs> but that's the. Uh, a really nice layout of the final. And um, I, I just wanted to give you all of these things in their final stages. Last but not least, there's the great Gene W4IQN relay. And you could hear whatever. You go to Gateway Electronics. I just got a note from them today. They finally got. Uh, they ran out. <laughs> That's the problem. A lot of these places are running out of parts. And uh, he, she just got Lisa just got a new, uh, a new shipment in of that. The other thing uh, I've had an awful lot of questions about the coil. Here is how you can build your coil. Uh, Gene did a great job on this. And one thing you have to to pay attention to he's using mechmaster car that's a company you can put it into into uh, google and it's an 85085k8 that is a strip it's it's a wire uh, or a co uh, organizer so you can organize wire runs well we're really going to do it here you take the PVC, this is a the regular PVC, put it in the microwave oven for about 10 minutes. Why do you do that, Heil? Because PVC will affect the RF. But if you put it in the microwave oven, it won't do that. So you do that first. And then you take the McMasters and you put them around the outside. Now, I, you want to use wax paper around it first. This is all told here. You use wax paper around it. Then you mount the McMaster. Uh, there we go. The McMaster cores around. And now, once you do that, you take some, uh, I'd use 16 gauge wire. You can get that at the Lowe's or Home Depot and wind your coil. When you get it all, all done, you pull all that away and guess what? You have a beautiful coil. I mean, really pretty. And uh, there's a picture of it all without that. Last but not least, this is the one I get the most requests for. What about the parts? Well... The parts are all available, but they're not available, all of them, from amateur, uh, amateur <laughs> antique electronics. Antique electronics uh, have most of them, and they have the kits set up. There's the part numbers right there. You give them the parts number, P, Bob Heil, Pine Board AMT, Amateur Transmitter, Power Supply, BH, Power Supply, PBH, mic preamp. Those, you'll get all the parts for that that they have. What you won't get is the 2.5 millihenry choke. And you're going to get that now from MFJ. Uh, Hammond up in uh, Canada, wake up, Ohio. <laughs> Hammond uh, was the builder of that for decades. Well, they quit building it. So we were 
out of luck for a while. Well, MFJ have them and you can go call Richard at MFJ and you're going to get to coil it from them also. The tubes are going to come from this. I, I really suggest that over uh, anything else. It's vacuumtubes.com. Uh, Michael is a, a guy in the St. Louis area and he's got lots of tubes and his prices are great. The relay and a lot of other parts, they're really great, is Gateway Dash Electronics. You have to be very careful. If you don't put that dash in there, you're going to get a Gateway Electronics in the UK. So it's Gateway Electronics. Look at their website. Oh, man, she's got all kinds of stuff. And crystals, AF4K.com. So that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I, I know you, a lot of you have seen it. A lot of you have used it and you're built and so on. You're going to say, why would you do it again? I did it again because I'm getting so many requests. Because a lot of people since the QST article came out, they didn't know about Ham Nation. And they didn't know about this. But they're like, like wow, we want to do this. So I wanted to, to do it. Because a lot of new viewers tonight. I guarantee you they're 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 here tuning up on that. Last but not least, you remember last week I showed you how the guy did a toilet. Well, I I got the uh, the forms just yesterday, and uh, I'll get into that maybe next week. When I, I don't know if I get time, but week after we'll we'll do this instead of the coil from MFJ. That'll be your whole final coil. Forty one turns on that little puppy. And, uh, another way to build a coil. That's what we're trying to do is to kind of teach us all how to do it all. So there you go. I'll uh, shut up and go away. I, <laughs> I hope that it was rewarding for some of you. And I hope it wasn't boring for us, a lot of you that aren't building. But we're trying to help you learn more about this hobby. And that's, I guess, the number one thing I hear from so many people. It's like, wow, thank you. So, yeah. <laughs>